Good day, madams and messieurs. I'm going to do a video on some of the gear I use, some of the flesh and beams I have. Uh, all this stuff is is fairly inexpensive. If you're just getting into trapping, starting, you don't have to run out and buy the best gear ever. I'll give you a breakdown on some of the tools I use. So the first one is a is a carpenter's hook blade. I think it's used either for carpet or roofing. I use that to, to split most animals. These are just very small filleting knives. The reason why I went with a small filleting knife is they're very easy to sharpen. It's It works beautifully at getting a, a, a sharp edge. You can see I have three of them here. I think I paid like 10 bucks for them. Not all three, but 10 bucks each. And then the last knife here is like a, a dollar store knife. When you pull it out of the uh, the case, it sharpens along the way, and then an inexpensive knife sharpener. Um, most of my gear, like I say, uh, my flesh and beam. I believe this one is a two-inch ABS. I just took a saw and put a an angle at the top of it. I use that for uh, make if they're big enough, Martin. Cut it as long as you want. You can make all kinds of little holders for it. The sky's the limit whatever's comfortable for you. The other one that I use this one I believe is 3 inch yes it's a 3 inch and you'll see down in there I trimmed up a 2 by 4 because I noticed with otter when I put torque on it it was bending so that's that's what I use for the larger animals. Wolves Wolves, Otter, Fisher, Lynx uh, back here I think this one's an inch and a half for your smaller mink. Again, this is what I use. Uh, now, Smokey, you've seen him in my videos. He just uses the board. He uses, when he's stretching rats and he's using the wire stretcher, he scrapes on the wire stretcher. If he's using a, uh, a muskrat board like this, he scrapes right on the board. So it's it's entirely up to you and, and what you feel comfortable using. Oh, what else can I show you? That's that's pretty much it for my gear. This here, when the when the beers go on the board, I, I nail them down and then I raise them up on the nails so that they dry evenly. When it comes to pulling the nails, and I may do a demo on that, you can't pull on the head of the nail, so you got to put you got to get your pliers in underneath, in right right here. Pop the nail and then pull it out of the hide. Pop the nail, pull it out of the hide. If you try and just pull it by the head, you're going to rip the rip the hide. Don't ask me how I know. So what I did was I had an inexpensive pair of pliers here, channel not channel locks, but uh, slip joint pliers. And I just took a, a half inch nut and tacked it to the back. After you pop two, three beaver off the boards, your finger starts getting raw because you're using it as a fulcrum. So with the with any kind of spacer on the back, it just makes it easier to pop nails. Sorry, I'm doing everything here one handed so the camera works a little bit shaky. Uh, I might do a little demo on. We, we got lots of skinning to do. Curly's supposed to show up, so when, when he gets here, I might do a. <coughs> pardon me. A small demo on these particular knives I have. Um, the only other stuff that I, the, the more expensive gear, if you will, that I have, is I have a set of Klein side cutters that I use for nipping off the, the front paws on just about all animals, except for beaver. And this is the, the Post Beaver Skinner, I think. Hands down my favorite knife. Um, when I was learning to skin, the knives I learned on were of similar style, short curved blade and well that's just what I'm comfortable with again do you need it? No you can do it with these filleting knives no problem uh, again with my technique these knives I have to slow down a little bit if I'm doing beaver because of the, the sharp point it'll dig in on the on the back stroke after I make a cut and I go to position to make another cut oftentimes this little tip will trip me up like I say, I'll, I'll do a little demo 
when uh, when Curly gets here. You good? You gonna be okay? Yeah, working on it. <laughs> All right, so I gave you a bit of a rundown on, on some of the cheaper gear that I use. Um, yeah, now I'll give you a little demo on how we, how we use it. This is just a regular run of the mill buck or two type of stay sharp knife with a belt and sharpener. So as you pull it out, you can sharpen it. A little elbow grease, you can cut the, uh, the front paws off as long as you hit the, the joint. Absolutely. You had to pick that right. You can tell I haven't done this in a while. I switched over to side cutters. Makes matters a lot easier. Now as far as splitting. Again, brush, a couple of bucks, buck or two, whatever. I clamp the legs, you can use the three screw or the three nail method. I'll start with the hook blade. Hook blade, I start at the ankle. That's it, it's open. Flip it around. Same shows, other side. Blades are relatively inexpensive, come in sets of five, I believe. So as soon as you feel that it's it's pulling, it's not cutting, toss it out, replace it. Always have a sharp knife. So that's opening them up. This is one that I've already skinned. This, I believe, is 2 inch ABS. Cut it as long or as short as you like. Rat slides on nice. I use that same knife, but I use the back of it in order to scrape. Steady, even pressure. You go too hard, you'll tear them. You go too soft, nothing moves. Takes a little bit of, well, you'll get a feel for it. With muskrats, you got to leave the saddle on and paper towel. Paper towel is probably my biggest expense. Now, what happens if you got a, a large rat or a bigger animal? That's why this angle's here. You can raise it up, put his front leg in it, gives you a little more room to play. Normally, I use a shorter one because I like to sit on the stool, but it is what it is. Good. Yeah. Alright, madams and messieurs, I seem to have missed uh, uh, just a few items that were um, bugging me, so we'll, we'll cover them at the end of the video here. So here's my fancy dancy uh, flesh and beam stand. It's not adjustable, I, I set it up for mine and Curly Beard's height. Curly's actually got, I think, two or three inches taller than me. It was just some scrap 2x4s and stuff I had lying around. And nothing, nothing you can really pattern off of. It was just, like I say, something I was tinkering with. Maybe one of these days I'll actually uh, build something for keeps. And then uh, the only other one I think that I missed was Fleshing Beaver. And for Fleshing Beaver, we use the almighty paint scraper. I grind the corners off so that you can don't catch and pull and yada 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 and with the paint scraper well with all scrapers you, as long as you're going straight on the animal you're fine if you happen to go sideways you're going to slice them so other than that like I say for I'm going to say somewhere in the maybe I'll do a, a a challenge like that I'll take 50 bucks go out and see what I can whatever I can pick up and use but anyways Till next time, stay frosty.